Hey, welcome back everybody. Of course, this is Dr. Keith McNally, and today I'm going to start a new series. And this time it's going to be about backstory or story. So all of you at this point know that I love story. Stories are the facilitator or uh, they're the starting point for any PBL or project-based learning activity that I like to engage in. Now, you know I've talked about uh, stories from the child's perspective or from the young learner's perspective. And so we've had conversations about Timmy, Tammy, and of course, Jessica. And then I've began adding stories around my daughter, Kaylin. And all of these are really vital um, components to the learning strategy in project-based learning, meaning that we just don't dump uh, content onto the learners without it having really some some meaning to put it really basically we want to have we want it to have a starting point we wanted to have a a meaning or a purpose you know we always get the question or I mean I know high school and probably middle school students and I simply forget when this is taught algebra why do I need to learn algebra I'm never going to use it so if when teachers get those kind of questions from students, it's easy to say, um, sure you will, or yes you will, or something like that, without actually giving them an example of when that particular algebra lesson or piece of content is used in the real world. And so if we link it back to what things are, or when they're going to use it, or where it's being applied, um, at their level of thinking, then it makes sense. And so if we do that or when we do that, we can easily uh, get better engagement and just make it more real, make it real for the students. So this time I'm not going to talk about Timmy or Tammy or Jessica or Kaylin. I'm going to talk about me. And I'm going to do that from the perspective of when I was younger. So way back when I was 13, 14. Um, and well, let me give you some backstory on my backstory. So I am an asthmatic and I have always been an asthmatic. Um, I carry around an emergency inhaler. And this is the story of when I decided that my disease or disorder, my asthma, was no longer going to control um, how I lived my life. And so up until a certain, up until about 13, 14, maybe it was 15, that um, I didn't engage heavily in sports or anything, uh, you know, any kind of activity that would exert uh, stress on my heart or my lungs. And of course, this is a pulmonary disease, and so my lungs would uh, very much hurts and I couldn't breathe and things like that. And so if you're familiar with with asthma, you understand that. Anyway, uh, the story is this, is that when I was going to school uh, one day, when I was going uh, to high school and it was, I lived in Philadelphia, it was cold, it was November, December, it was uh, snow on the ground. And so when it's really cold, it really affects my lungs differently. And it just makes it that much more difficult to breathe. And um, to to use the old our grandpa's stories that I used to walk to school uphill both ways, um, you know, going to school and coming home. Uh, this was one of those things. The actual uh, this high school actually was up, not a very steep hill, but it was up a hill. Um, so I do get to use that part of the story. So. Uh, the bus drops you off at the bottom of the hill and you have to walk up the hill to get to the actual school. And by the time I got to the school, I had a really bad asthma attack. And of course, I had to use my emergency inhaler. But it was something inside of me said, I don't want to live like this. I don't want to be at the mercy of uh, my lungs not being able to handle even mild stress. And so I decided that day that I was going to start jogging or running, and I did. So after school, I went home, and I had my first jog down the street, which lasted all oh, five seconds. And then from there, I was just determined, and I actually started. I actually enjoyed running. So 
uh, I actually continued on that journey to become a distance runner. So I wasn't going to be fast and I wasn't going to be uh, a marathoner, probably not at least at that time I thought I could, but at any rate, um, I just wanted to uh, be healthy for being healthy sake, you know, not having to use my inhaler uh, whenever uh, the need ar arose. I wanted to be healthy. I wanted my heart to be healthy. I wanted my lungs to be healthy. And my longest run ever was 13 miles. And, you know, now that I'm up in age, uh, I continue to, I don't run anymore. I do very uh, power walks, I guess is what you would say. And so I still maintain uh, a very rigorous exercise program. And so if you used something like that, and you could use either my story or somebody else's story is to say, what are the benefits of regular or daily exercise? You know, from, you know, my, my background says an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, why is that? You know, why does an apple a day keep the doctor away? What is it about an apple? What is it about uh, maintaining daily nutrition, uh, eating fruits and vegetables versus candy and cake? You know, what meats should you use? Should you go vegan? Should you not go vegan? And what type of aerobic and anaerobic exercises are good for the body? So this is a PBL activity that could actually really improve the livelihood of our students at any age. But again, it comes from a story. And then from the story, you could say, do you know anybody? Or have you experienced this? Or how do you want to improve you know, your life based off of, you know, exercise and just good nutrition. So hopefully that's a good starting point for you and your PBL activity. And I'll see you next time. Take care.